is my first time in Africa, and if you've never been there, everything looks quite strange at first. Our prayer was that we would be open to what God wanted us to see, but we had no idea how powerful that would be. We would meet people whose stories would strengthen our faith forever. And we would learn how water, simple, clean water, is life itself. Today we want to share with you a wonderful secret. How without taking one penny out of your church budget, we might be the hands and feet of Christ doing God's work here. Hi, we're Lisa and Denny Balesi, and we have just flown 25 hours and come 10,000 miles to Africa to fulfill a dream of bringing clean water to this part of the world. We're in Ethiopia right now, a country, the second largest populated country in all of the continent of Africa, 80 million people. Over 60 million of those people have uh, no clean water sources. Worldwide, more than 4,000 children die from dirty water every day. But those numbers were impossible to grasp until we met this woman. Every day, Zena Jigsa walks from her village to get water for her family. Two hours each way, and she makes two round trips, walking eight to 10 hours a day. In fact, if you want to know what any woman or girl in rural Ethiopia is probably doing right now at this moment, she's likely carrying water, 50 to 70 pounds of water. And odds are, she's been doing it since she was about seven years old. Little or no time for school or family. And as backbreaking as this sounds, it is even more heartbreaking. Because the water makes her village sick. Zena gets her drinking water here at the Dilla River. 800 people use the river to wash themselves, their clothes, even their baby's diapers. My first impressions are yikes. <laughs> it's a slow moving stream at best, and it is their only option. Just up river, livestock use it too. I'm stooping over an area here that I, I'm, I'm even afraid to touch this. There's no movement in the water at all, and I can see bugs floating on the water, and animal feces. It just seems just totally impossible that people would survive in drinking this water every day, and, and that's what they've been doing for a very long time. If a picture's worth a thousand words, then this picture for our story is, uh, is essentially a novel. A novel in which a child dies on every page from waterborne sicknesses like giardia and diarrhea. Back at home, Zena told us her only daughter died of diarrhea. So did four of her neighbor's children. And one night, her youngest boy got sick. Zena's husband, Demise. At four in the morning, he woke up. We saw him stretching his whole body, that tiny baby. The nearest hospital was four hours away, and so they set out walking. Demacy was holding him when he felt his little boy die. <laughs> and the saddest thing is that Zena will return to the same contaminated water tomorrow and the next day. And yet, there is hope. In similar Ethiopian villages, World Vision has dug wells, providing clean, safe drinking water. It's clean, it's good, it tastes really good. Within a few minutes of being in any of the villages with clean water, you feel the difference. <laughs> you see smiles and health and hope. <laughs> Someone mentioned to me recently, when I asked why was water so important, she said the water is life. We met families like the Gypsas. Mom used to carry water up to eight hours a day. So you can imagine how she felt when World Vision put in a well right next to her house. I was very, very happy. <laughs> her daughter is pregnant, 
Knowing her grandchild will have clean water was the answer to their prayers. And it has come true. I pray to the Lord for that. And it is not just providing clean water. World Vision helps teach people what to do with it. Basic hygiene and the importance of washing and keeping their families healthy. Information we take for granted is literally the difference between life and death. Which brings us finally to the obvious question. You might ask, how can you make a difference? You don't even have to write a check. All this takes is selling maybe just one item in your home. Let us explain. He gave $100 to 100 people and sparked a wave of kindness around the world. You may have seen our story on national television, how back in 2000 we gave 100 people in our California congregation what we called a kingdom assignment based on the parable of the talents. We gave each $100 and told them they should multiply it. People were crying, shaking, laughing. They did amazing things multiplying their $100 many times. We made quilts for these homeless kids. Supporting the homeless to starting a home for battered women. When you have the intention to do something good, it's like, you know, God meets you more than halfway. We then launched Kingdom Assignment 2. We asked our congregation to liquidate something, to sell one personal belonging, and donate that money to a project that benefited the poor in Jesus' name. Again, the results were amazing, eventually generating hundreds of thousands of dollars. We saw it happen in our church, and it was something that was just lying around the house, something that was in the garage. Our dream is to use the powerful tools of the Kingdom Assignment to help World Vision in its goal to bring clean water and improve sanitation to over 500,000 people in Ethiopia by 2015. We want you to liquidate for living water, to help save thousands of families like Zima's without taking a dime out of anyone's bank account or a dollar out of anyone's church budget. When we last saw Zina's family, her husband said goodbye and shared a powerful message about our visit. It is not American visitors that are here. It is God understanding the hardships we're having here. It is God who is now with us. We're gonna take this story back and we're gonna to talk to churches to raise monies to be able to build these wells in this community and to do it as quickly as we possibly can. The Father said, you have brought God's gift of hope to us and we will never forget it. And it was one of those deals where you feel like, well, we better do something about this. They really are dying for clean water and we want to do it as quickly as possible. And I know if you were here, you would feel the same as us. So join us. Launch a kingdom assignment in your church. Tell your congregation how selling one personal belonging can help bring life to thousands. Do it to the glory of God, to the blessing of others, and to our own joy. Let's do it. It is only when we have clean water that we can continue living. Otherwise, we would die.